Hello, everybody. Um, a very warm welcome to my vlogcast this month. Um, many of you have been very concerned about the shortage of interferon, and I'm very pleased to say that we've got Professor Claris Claire Harrison from Guys here to tell us a bit more about the shortage and give some reassurance to patients. Claire, why is there a shortage? Well, hello, Nona. It's nice to be back on your vlogcast again. Um, so there is a shortage, but it is a temporary shortage. And um, just to sort of recap, there are two forms of pegylated interferon. There is Pegasis, which was previously manufactured by Hoffman LaRoche. And there is Besremi, which is marketed in Europe by AOP Pharma. The form of interferon that is in short supply is Pegasus. And the reason it's in short supply is Hoffman LaRoche actually stopped manufacturing it and sold the rights to manufacture Pegasus to a company called Pharma And. Now, Pharma And are very, very dedicated to producing a Pegasus for the MPN community. And they have, in fact, built a whole new plant to manufacture Pegasus. And this plant is um, rolling some Pegasus off the production line, but it takes time to be sure that what's produced is stable and roadworthy and fit for everyone to you know, use as a drug and put into their bodies. So we've been using up old stock of Pegasus. There is a supply of Best Remy, but it's not um, it's not what's called reimbursed. So not all governments agree to pay for Best Remy. It's a it's, um, different cost. So the shortage is temporary. Pegasus have an amazing factory. We know because John Mathias, who is co-chair of MPN Voice with yourself, has been to visit it and we've seen the pictures and we've met the company. And we estimate that there will start to be sufficient Pegasus sometime from the summer to the autumn of next year. In the meantime, there is Best Remy, which is approved for patients with PV, for example, in Scotland and in several other countries across the world. But um, Best Remy is not approved in England or any of the other um, devolved nations in the UK. So at the moment, every hospital has a fixed supply of Pegasus, which is being given to it, which is basically calculated on how much they were using in the past. So every single hospital across the UK, speaking for the UK audience here, is affected in the same way. And we are all trying to make sure that we have enough interferon to treat the patients that need it. My goodness, what a lot is going on. Um, Claire, just a, a simple question really here. Um, you know, can patients actually be transferred to Besremi only in Scotland? In Scotland, um, mm. patients can be transferred to Besremi. They, they have um, rules about which patients can have it. Yeah. Okay. Um, in there are a few patients in England who, for example, in the past where we've had extenuating circumstances mm -hmm. and we haven't been able to use Pegasus or it hasn't worked, for example, for a pregnant lady mm -hmm. who's got a very high count, interferon would be the only drug we would give in pregnancy. We have been able to obtain it. Um, but at the moment, um, NHS England Mm -hmm. which commissions drugs for England is considering and we've been having meetings with them for many weeks now and we've made a strong case for them to commission as a temporary basis Best Remy and we expect and hope that we will hear a positive answer on that in the coming week or so. Um, We've been lobbying a lot. So as you will know, MPN Voice, Leukemia Care, Blood Cancer UK all wrote to various people. Mm. I joined Blood Cancer UK for the launch of their Blood Cancer Action Plan in Westminster. So and was zooming around the room, talking mm. to as many people as possible about all of our approximately 2000 patients, we believe, in the UK that are on Pegasus. 
and campaigning very strongly that we needed NHS England to commission Bess Remy. Um, so they have heard our arguments and they are sympathetic, but of course we have to make a case and it will cost more money. So it will cost somewhere between five and eight million pounds extra. And we, we know that everybody's got their hand out for more money at the moment. So um, we're doing our best. I We expect that if NHS England agrees to commission Bess Remy, then the same might also happen, for example, in Northern Ireland and Wales. And although Best Remy is available in Scotland, it's only available for PV patients. So we would really hope that then we could use the same arguments mm -hmm. with the devolved nations. Now, are there other options for patients? Yes. So, as you know, right from the beginning, when we discovered there was a shortage of Pegasus, we put a message out and we've put a couple of messages out now. And thanks so much to everyone for um putting out the message and to you at home for reading it and thinking about it. So what we asked was, if you are, for example, taking half a syringe of Best Remy, say 45 micro um, of Pegasus, 45 micrograms every week, that when you go to um, see your medical team, they may well ask you instead to take a whole syringe, but to stretch out the time between the injections. So what we're trying to do is make the little amount of Pegasus that we have go as far as possible. So by agreeing to take a bigger dose and space it out more, you're preserving the amount of Pegasus that we have for you, but also for other patients. Now, we understand that sometimes, of course, patients do experience more side effects if we give a bigger dose. We would expect those side effects to get less, hopefully, over time, but they don't always. But of course, if you're only taking the drug half as often, hopefully you might be able to put up with that for a little while. We, we know that's tricky. I'm also aware and have seen uh, comments and questions from other patients about, well, could I not just put the syringe back in the fridge and reuse the other half of the syringe? So what I would say is we um, did discuss that with a pharma company and we did discuss that with NHS England who have expert pharmacists working for them and they recommended and I would recommend in general that patients do not do that because we have not proved that the pegasus that's left in the syringe will remain stable and sterile. That means free of infection for when you next choose to use it. If you have been cleared by your doctor or nurse to do this, and again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, do not reuse the same needle. You should definitely put a different needle on the syringe. Now, of course, there are also other drugs. And I'm hoping that um, you will have heard the strong message from me, which is this is a temporary shortage of Pegasus, a temporary shortage. So for example, patients with PV may be able to use ruxolitinib or they may be able to use hydroxycarbamide or hydroxyurea. I know um, patients sometimes feel very strongly about side effects of specific drugs. And there are times of course, when we cannot use those drugs I mentioned pregnancy as an example earlier on. But if you are asked by your healthcare team or offered the option to go to or to start, if you're a newly diagnosed patient, to start hydroxycarbamide with the promise that this would be reviewed when supplies of Pegasus or interferon become more freely available, then I would reassure you that we do not believe there is harm in using um, hydroxycarbamide. We know that many, if not most MPN patients, even yourself know, and I think you'd probably be happy for people to know that. Do you take hydroxycarbamide and have been taking it for a long time? I, I, that's definitely the answer there. Now, if you're newly diagnosed and you would, are there clinical trials or are there other options for really new, for newly diagnosed patients? 
Yes. So, of course, clinical trials have got um, very um, fixed entry criteria. So um, for patients with myelofibrosis, thinking about diseases first. So for myelofibrosis patients, um, if patients have intermediate one or above risk, there are a couple of clinical trials using a JAK inhibitor, um, alone as a run-in or in combination with another drug such as Selenexor or, for example, Navita Madeline. Um, and of course, a patient who is in need of a JAK inhibitor, we actually have three JAK inhibitors now. We should be celebrating um, shortly some news perhaps on Fedratinib as well. Um, for patients with essential thrombocythemia, um, we will shortly be opening a study for patients who are newly diagnosed with a drug called Bomodemstat, which we've spoken about before, which is an LSD1 inhibitor. That's an enzyme that affects the production of platelets and inflammation. So that, there's a randomized trial um, for ET patients. And for polycythemia vera patients, there is the study that MPN Voice is supporting, which is called Mithridate, which is being run in England, UK rather, and France. And that is for patients who've been diagnosed in the last 15, one five years, who um, are requiring treatment and who have at some time had a white count over 11. And in this study, patients have the option of being randomized between ruxolitinib, which is a JAK inhibitor, and either interferon or hydroxycarbamide. So for PV patients, um, first of all, we'll be trying to um, keep supplies of interferon to support that trial because it's a very important trial. Um, and that would offer the opportunity to for patients to have ruxolitinib, which wouldn't normally be available in the frontline setting. So as a first treatment, just to emphasize for mithridate, if, for example, you are a patient who's been taking hydroxycarbamide for seven or eight years and it's working well for you, you would still have the opportunity to enter that study. But that, of course, that doesn't, it's not relevant for interferon. But if you're a patient who's been on interferon, um, and you're interested in that study, you could still be randomised in that study. Um, it's open in, I think, 38 or 39 hospitals across the UK, and it's doing very well at the moment. But as I said, please don't forget that we are doing our very best to make sure we have enough interferon. We are doing our very best to convince NHS England to allow us to use Best Remy for some patients. And if you do get asked to either space out your injections or, for example, to take another drug for a short time, um, and an option for ET patients here would also be amagrelide, um, then, you know, do think about that carefully and do remember that you can change drug when interferon is available. And of course, the most important thing is to, to go back to your team and talk to your team about all this, because as I understand it, and certainly the Medical Advisory Committee on um, MPN, MPN Voice talk to each other the whole time. Absolutely true. And just to say, Nona, that um, all of this work has actually been done in terms of nagging NHS England, writing papers, endlessly going back to them, lots and lots and lots mm. of Zoom calls, that's being done by a whole team. It's not just being done by me. There are also nurses involved. And every single um, healthcare team that looks after MPM patients will be aware of this shortage and is aware of what steps are being mm. taken. And, you know, it, there's no point trying to think about hopping to another hospital because that hospital may have a better supply because actually yeah. we don't. We're, we're all in the same um, situation. So also, I know that everyone is kind and nice to their healthcare team but do you remember just the same as in covid we are doing our best mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is putting a lot of extra strain on nurses pharmacists uh, and um, doctors mm -hmm. as well because we're having to think very hard about uh, mm -hmm. about what to do so you know, if you're worried but you've got an appointment coming up wait until your appointment because we may well hopefully fingers crossed have positive news from nhs england 
And I think the message I've taken from you this evening is that this is a short term problem and that this time next year, hopefully we won't be talking about it. Um, we hope. Absolutely. And um, a European Medicines Agency actually approved, I think it was while you and I were in a conference in Warsaw, actually. Mm -hmm. No, no, they actually approved um, uh, Pegasus for PV mm -hmm. and ET. And uh, we've been using it before without mm -hmm. it being approved. So clearly that company, they have built a factory. They are, they've got batches of interferon mm -hmm. coming off the production line and they've already been and got it approved. So, and that means we've got a strong... Um, partnership between the patient and the clinical community and this company which is producing this really important drug so hopefully we'll have strong production strong availability yeah. and a company that's really committed to supporting work in the field going forwards Claire that's wonderful thank you so much I'm sure that what you've said will give a lot of people a lot of reassurance um, and I'm very grateful to you for taking part in this this month's vlogcast thank you Thank you, Nona, and thank you to everybody who's been supporting um, all of the extra work in managing this shortage.